All right, welcome back to the shop. As you can see, it's a beautiful day. Uh, yeah, I don't think the digital camera's gonna read that, but it's 99 degrees in the shop. Beautiful day. I just got back from Tucson. It was 115 when we were up there, so this is nice, actually. It feels good. Um, so anyways, topic today, this video, airbags, the air suspension bags on the uh, M1161 Growler. It's gonna apply to the M1163 as well. So this one that I'm working on, um, I forget what this one's uh, 117 uh, this driver's side front bag uh, grew a big bubble out the side and it was getting ready to blow and you can see it's splitting open um, so I was looking on the forums and there was some talk before about about the airbags um, this one guy that chimed in and said yeah I changed them they're a piece of cake and then somebody else said no you need special tooling <clears throat> you have to have a the, the bags have to be crimped in um, you have to send it back to uh, ride tech to get it done so I contacted Ride Tech. I found out that uh, there's only one place, one person you can go through to get the Ride Tech to, to change the bags, and um, they do a full rebuild. I guess they check they, I don't know, I don't know if they do the bearings and stuff, but they they reseal the shock, they put a new bag on it, and it was pretty pricey. I mean, if you just had to do one, it wouldn't be so bad. But if you're doing four, <clears throat> by the time shipping back and forth and doing the whole thing, you're going to be at like two thousand bucks, you know. So. I just, I found a part number for the tool that you need for it to clamp onto the shaft here. It's just an aluminum tool. I ordered it. It turns out it's not the right one, but I was able to adapt it so it fits. Um, it was set for a 5 8 shaft. Uh, these shafts are 7 8 So I just, what I did is I just clamped the tooling together. I lined it up as good as I could, tightened the bolts up, and I just put it in my drill press and, and bored it out with a drill bit. And it worked great. Um, as far as changing the the bags real simple it's real simple um, I'm gonna show you in the video here how to do one I'm gonna do one right now um, it takes you know probably the hardest part is lining the bolts back up to get the shock in because it is a gas adjust shock in there so you can't just slap it in there and push it up into place um, it was kind of a pain in the butt getting the bottom bolt in one you know under finishing it up but um, it, I mean it's completely doable but that was the hardest part so that's that's good so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this wheel off and pull this suspension unit out and um and rebuild it so and one other thing about the bags as well the uh there was someone that, that that went online that said that they were easy to do he said he went online and he found them in like four different brands out there because i think there's four or five or six manufacturers that make airbags for for all different things they make them for the seats i have on my heavy equipment you know to over the road trucks the cab suspension uh airbags for for over the road trucks even the suspension systems for over the road trucks these ones here are actually for a bus. Um, they're real, I guess there's a lot of them in Europe that are using the same bag on like public transit buses and stuff like that. But anyway, so he said that he bought the Firestone brand, which is what is on here, and then he found some cheaper ones. So he sent the Firestone ones back because they were around $70 a bag. And then uh, it wasn't even a few weeks later that I tried to buy them. And I, I, I love sourcing parts. It's kind of a thing I do. I like going online and with my heavy equipment business, with the military vehicle stuff. I love sourcing parts. I love the hunt, you know? And I searched and searched and searched. I searched for, I don't know, I've got six or eight hours probably searching for these bags and they're gone. Somebody bought every bag up that you could find. And I finally, I did find one source and I was kind of staying, staring away from it because it's a Chinese uh, made bag. But then if you do look at the other bags, they're almost all made in China anyways. So I had to do this because I had to get this growler out of here. I have to get it back to the owner. And um, so I was able to find the bags on eBay I think they're like 25 bucks a piece and uh, it took about two weeks for them to come in the mail um, kind of slow shipping and stuff but I got them and um, it looks good I've got air in the bag everything seems seems good with it um, they look just I mean you know how it is they're, they're, there's there's always a bunch of different brands for different things um, and uh, you know you'd be surprised you buy a Firestone bag or a Tech bag or one of those different brands and they're probably all made in the same factory anyways they're probably made in the same they just put a different uh, nameplate in the mold um, to get the branding on it so um, I'm confident they're gonna be a good bag there should be no nothing wrong with them plus it's the only bag I can get so what am I gonna do for some reason and um, the the country is out of them I looked in Europe I looked in Asia I looked um, you know all over the states for them and it went from lots of bags being available to uh, everybody was out all of a sudden they all sold out so anyways uh, I love when that kind of stuff happens anyways
uh, it takes a 9 16 wrench and that's it you know you well you pull the airline off and pull those two bolts out and you have it out um, now i'll get over here to uh pulling it apart it's pretty simple um this clamp here it's got you know it's a two-piece clamp it just clamps over over the uh, shaft right here, just near the top. It, you can have it touching this, it won't matter. When you go back together, you don't want this up too high, you wanna leave a little space, just so you know you're not tightening this up against this. Um, you just clamp it there, I'll, leave, I'll have it hanging on the vise, and you just unscrew this. It's just threaded on there. They do use a red Loctite. Um, if it doesn't come off real easily, you can heat it up. The Loctite, when, you know, when you get it hot, it'll break the Loctite down. The first one I did, I didn't have to do that. It, it popped right off. This one here, we'll see, so we'll see what it does. So that's it right there. You just clamp it in like that. Uh, their website says to clamp, uh, or to torque these to 50 foot pounds or something like that. I don't know, I, some number like that. I don't bother, I just tighten them up. One thing to watch out for as well is that these bushings will fall out, these little spacers. Um, they go into the uh, bearing itself. So just watch out for those so you don't lose one. Um, I just had two fall out when I tightened up the, uh, the clamp. I've got to just leave that one out. Make it easier to get the to get my uh, crescent wrench on there to loosen that. Um, so I just leave this clamped on the vise. Just get my crescent wrench on there. Can't turn it that easy. I can feel a little resistance from the uh, Loctite, but it's not that big a deal. All right, so you can see a little bit of the Loctite on here. Uh, you can just brush it off with a wire brush. The Loctite inside on the last one, I just reached in there with, the, with my pinky, with a rag on my pinky, and just kind of unscrewed it. And the, uh, you know, like I was unscrewing it, and the Loctite just unscrewed right out of the threads. So we'll get that cleaned up before we put it back together. And so now I'll pull the clamp off, and I'll, I'll clamp this back up in the vise, in the bottom, bushing in the vise, what's standing up, and I'll show you how to pop that off. So you can see I just use the two pry bars just to get it started, just popping off. And then this piece here, uh, it just slid right off the top. And this is this is the seat area for it. So I'll wipe that down before I put it back together. And then uh, I also use, I'm just this kind of cheating, not cheating a little bit, but I have it easier for me, but this is Murphy's soap. It's a tire mounting compound. Uh, it's right here. And it's the way you use it for mounting tires on heavy equipment. Uh, it makes this all slide together better because you do want to lube this stuff up so that it'll uh, slide together and get into place easier. Um, so it's not binding somewhere and then you might end up with a leak or something like that. But the, the soap just helps it seal right into place. So this one did, it came apart a little different than the last one. It's got this metal uh, unit inside that the bag rides on. And that slides down over the chamber there, or, you know, over the main part of the shock. And the last one that stayed in place and I was able to just pull the rubber up. So here's that center section that was in there. I just set it down over here, over this uh, shaft here that I had laying around. And I was just able to push down, push the diaphragm down off of it. And uh, it's real simple. It just, and it's got a couple of O-rings inside. I already checked those. Make sure they're still, got some oil film on them and everything's clean in there. And I'll just slide right over the shock housing, like that. And then we'll just slide the new bag on. So you can see I have a whole bunch of that uh, tire soap on there, the lubricant. And you just, this end of the bag goes down first. This one's got this uh, seat area, it goes down like that. And this area right here, the seat here presses down onto a onto the seat on top of this part. This part here is when it rolls over, um, you know, when it when it goes up into the bag. So you put that down in there. I'll pull the bag down, and then I'll reorientate the top and put the nut back on. That's it. All right, so you can see I cleaned this up with some uh, starting fluid, some ether, and I lubed it up with some of the tire uh, lube, and then I just push it down over the stem of the shock, and just kind of jiggle it down, you know, easy so it don't wire up the threads. And then once it gets to the top of the uh, bag here, there's, there's a seat area here. It's just like a tire bead almost. 
and you just got to kind of work it, jiggle it into there, and there it is. And you just pull the bag down. You got to, you'll feel air coming out the hole here as you pull it down. Get the clamp in place, and then next, I'll just screw this on. I'll clean it up first, and then we'll screw, we'll lock tight it and screw it on. Then once you mount this back in the vehicle, just hook the airline back up. Uh, you filled up with shop air through the Schrader valve here, and you'll see the bag will fill right up and it'll roll back into place and take shape, and it'll be ready to go. Ah, it's cooking hot in here. It just got to be 102. Probably the easiest thing to do would be, you know, if you're doing your CV joints, to do these at the same time if they need it. Because you, then you'd have the suspension unit unhooked, you'd have no tension on there, and it'd be a real piece of cake to get that lined up. But I wasn't about to uh, knock the ball joints out just for, just for that. I was able to get the bolt in. A little bit of a struggle, but not that bad. So this is all in place now. And let me get my air gun, and I'll air it up, and you can see what it looks like when it inflates. And you can see how it takes shape. There you go. And it's seated right on there. So much air I got in, I think. Yes, yeah, so you can see it inflated, it took shape. Um, I've got 30 pounds in it right there, and it's plenty. I don't hear any air leaking or anything. Once I get this thing back on the wheels, I'll layer it up and give it its full, um, you know, all the way to the max height just to make sure everything seats in there good. But um, as you can see, it looks good. So I hope this video helps you out. Um, as you can see, they're, they're really not that hard to do. If, if you have any mechanical abilities all and you've got the tools you need and stuff like that, it's pretty simple to do. Um, you know, save you a lot of money. You know, if you can buy these bags on eBay for 25 bucks a piece, uh, I think shipping was even free, if I remember right. And uh, it's a lot cheaper than sending them off, getting them rebuilt, and paying to ship them back. Because by the time you're done with that, that's probably going to cost you, you know, a couple thousand dollars, I would imagine. So I hope this helps. Um, stay tuned for the next video. Um, if you haven't uh, already subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when videos like this uh, come out. And uh, please hit the like button. I appreciate that. Um, it really helps. And comments are always great too. I love when you guys leave comments. That way at least I know you're watching it and maybe you're getting something out of the, out of the video. So anyways, uh, thank you and have a good day.